We're moving to the third segment, acceptance of non-Orthodox movements and Jews. Just a quick point, I'm still waiting to hear from Rabbi Kahana the specific halakha that demands expulsion of people who wish to live peacefully in Israel. And I'm looking to hear from Rabbi Greenberg his position of whether, from his perspective, Jerusalem itself is negotiable. If Jerusalem could become the capital of the Palestinian Arab state, for example, if that's the only way to assure peace. Acceptance of the non-Orthodoxy, Rabbi Greenberg will be the first to speak in this round as well. Rabbi Greenberg, you have been a major advocate of Israel's acceptance of all movements of Judaism. Would you place any limits upon the Israeli government's acceptance of them? For example, should the State of Israel immediately accept Reconstructionist reform and conservative conversions? Should Israel tomorrow officially list as Jewish those born of patrilineal descent? Should these individuals be allowed to declare immediate citizenship based upon the law of return? Should non-Orthodox rabbis in Israel beginning right away have the right to perform marriages and conversions even if they are not allowed? And should the chief rabbinate in Israel be reorganized to include representation from conservative reform and reconstructionist rabbis? If the answer is no, aren't you negating the legitimacy of these movements which you champion? If your answer is yes, are you creating two Jewish people as these movements have different definitions of who is a Jew? With all of these problems, do you favor the elimination of the chief rabbinate so that those who wish to marry or be considered Jewish in a non halakhic way may officially do so according to Israeli law? Rabbi Kamana, you have spoken out in the harshest terms against non-Orthodox movements. Would you accept them on any level? For example, would you support the Israeli government's funding of these schools? Even from your perspective, isn't it better that Jews study Torah there than not at all? Would you allow non-Orthodox rabbis' legitimacy in Israel, except in the areas of personal status issues? Could they, as Rabbi Rachman has suggested, be permitted to perform weddings without being the aging of the witnesses? Would you support Rabbi Lamb's proposal for a national court of religious law which would include leaders other than those denominated Orthodox to solve tragic problems of Jewish personal status? And how do you, Rabbi Kahana, view the non-observant or non-affiliated Jew? Do they have any level of holiness, or are they to be dismissed as valueless beyond the pale? Where do you for example, place the Shomer HaTzair Jew who throwed egg in your face but fought and died defending Israel. Finally, in your theocratic state governed by Torah laws, what would be the fate of the majority of Jews who are not yet observant? Would there, for example, be capital punishment for those who desecrate the Sabbath? Would the vast number of non-observant and non-affiliated Jews leave Israel if your vision was implemented? I know Rabbi Greenberg, and I know you, Rabbi Kahana, as people who love Jews. Why not promote greater observance by, leading, by teaching Torah in the spirit of love and concern, rather than through coercion and strong-arm tactics? The vast majority of Jews throughout the world, not just in Israel, agree that Israel do not want absolute separation of synagogue, for that matter, church and state. The key is pluralism. And just as the Misrata Datot has provided not just for Judaism and Jewish needs, but Christians and Muslims, and indeed other religions have never been better treated in the land of Israel than they are now under the Israeli government, so I think is the key insight Israel in the Jewish situation. The Orthodox were given a monopoly for 40 years, we blew it. The rabbi was not simpatico, was not university educated, whatever the reasons are, did not respond to the issues, and therefore our monopoly has become increasingly a source also of friction and of resentment. There is increasing pressure from the right of orthodoxy to impose its values, to exclude the conservative reform, who is a Jew, etc. 
The only answer, I think, is the reverse direction, to open it up. Pluralism means to stop using force and political pressures to keep out the conservative reform and reconstruction, to impose on the non dadaic population. The bulk of Israel, its population, will support one personal status standard. And it could be a serious negotiation between the Orthodox rabbi and the non-Orthodox rabbi that would provide one standard that the majority of reformed conservative or reconstructionists would accept and would live by. It will involve efforts to meet halfway on both sides, not halfway in compromises, but with dignity and respect for the principles of both. There isn't time in five minutes to go through details, but I'm glad we share a whole session with you in Klaus Critical Issues Conference this May that will give you a detailed program. I invite you all to come and attend. But on the other hand, we can close every theater in Israel. We are not going to stop every person who wants to eat pork. A recent bill was introduced, a push through the committee. It would cost $250 million to buy out those who are selling pork in the present situation. This is madness. And imposing it is not going to help in burning down bus shops is not going to help, and certainly the outrage of burning down synagogues for retaliation is not going to help. We have to learn to live and let live. It's great respect that we have to develop for each other. And frankly, if we had a more competitive situation, we have a more vital remnant. Rabbi Riskin, Rabbi Lichtenstein, Rabbi Hartman, Orthodox rabbis from America have come to Israel with a major contribution. But so are there also conservative reform rabbis already in Israel who have made a contribution. And I believe more can be done. And as far as the question of Abbas Israel, it's nice to talk about it. But the truth is, that's what it's all about. Rabbi Cook, when he spoke of Abbas Israel, understood that that meant showing the fullest respect for the rights of non observant to be non observant. And that's the only way they're going to live together, and some of them indeed, I think, will come around with his respect. But I want to spend all my time not just on that. There's another equally critical question, and I want to pose it to the people here. Mayor Kahana has two types of groups he appeals to. One, of course, is a, a, a religious nationalist element. The other is a kind of secular ethnic Jew who has appreciated his attempt to stick it to the guy after all these years. And I understand, and I appreciate that. And he appealed to secular Jews also who have felt this resentment. We all feel the rage of what was done to us in the Holocaust. I understand how he expresses that. There are times I feel like kicking like he does. But the truth is, you have to understand what he's saying about you, gentlemen, and about all the people who don't meet his standard of what he considers to be orthodox as against the Hellenizers. Listen to his own language in the Jewish press. Cleanse, cleanse the land of Israel of the foreign pollution of gentilized culture. The foreigners vomit their sickness onto us and we swallow it eagerly. We are the desecrators. Let us vomit them out and purge the holy land of all vestige of impurity. <laughs> that, is, that is a code word for committing violence against Jews who do not meet Orthodox standards. Uh, he says, the answer lies in, let me finish, quoting now, the answer lies in ridding ourselves of the extremist version of love of Jews. The extremist version means they have a right to live in it, in other words. Here's the, but he turns around and says, the Torah also speaks of the mitzvah of burning out the evil from our midst. Love of Jews, of course, and sacrifice them. But when a Jew rises to challenge the fundamentals of God, Jewry, and Israel, how many of you support Mayor Kahana have violated by violating Shabbos? By not believing in Tony Sene exactly the way he does it. If you're not observant Jew, you violate his fundamentals. That Jew must be stopped. And indeed, the punishment we bring on the wicked Jew goes along the necessary way to atone for him in the world to come. That is the Talmud's phrase for someone put to death. That his death execution atones for his sins. When he speaks at another time that the Jewish Hellenists, the mixed multitude, the gentilized Jews, are also murderers, we must vomit them out before they bring a Holocaust through their insane perverted morality. He is saying in code language that any violence is permitted against non-observant, non-Orthodox Jews. Now he doesn't say it openly because he's trying to play to two crowds, to the religious crowd and to the secular crowd. But those of you who are secular should really be in trouble because you'll be the first ones, although I shouldn't say that. Typically in this situation, what you start with is the code word of the Arabs, and then you mean the Jews. And of course the biggest threat is the Orthodox Jews who are like you because they might be credible. But in the long run, you end up eliminating everybody. And that kind of attitude that does not permit the right to dissent ends up in the long run excluding. So the man you're applauding, maybe the man will put you in jail for violating his conception of the law. I 
sat in a federal prison in this country for a year for so many Jews, and I never once asked that they were Orthodox, conservative, or religious. A decent person would have come to me before the debate and said, Look, it appears to me from these wordings that you said this, is it true? It was an indecency that was performed in the synagogue today. Violence against Jews? What an outrage. The cop movement is made up of over 80% non observant Jews. They know exactly what I say, and they and they know exactly what I write, because what he read was also written in in my books in Hebrew. I love Jews, and because I love Jews, I know that in Judaism there is no such concept as live and let live. It's a non-Jewish concept, which an Orthodox rabbi should be ashamed of himself. Quoting, the Jewish people, the Talmud tells us, stood at Mount Sinai, and each one came and arrayed the guarantor, each and every other Jew. The Jew sins brings down punishment upon all of us. We are not allowed, we cannot, we are, we are not free to simply say, live and let live. I'd be happy to say it, but I can't. I'm bound by Judaism. I'm not the product of a sharpness and admixture of Judaism and Western culture. The rabbis tell us that it's similar to two Jews in a boat, one in front and one in the back, and one in front so they hear someone banging in the back, and he looks and he sees the fellow in the back knocking a hole in the boat. And he says, what are you doing? He says, what do you want? It's my side. Well, in a boat, there is no side. There are no sides. When there's a hole in the boat, we all sink. And when Jews sin, we all suffer. And that is the basic axiom of Judaism. In the Chukotai, Telechu, if you shall walk in my statutes, or if you will abhor my statutes. And that which happened in, in Israel is not what I will do or what Greenberg will do. It's what the entire Jewish people does in terms of observance of God's commandments as given at, at Sinai. I don't want to force, we're not sending police into people's homes. But I would like the public character of Israel to be Jewish. If someone eats, eats ham, in his house, it's a tragedy. But no one will go into his home seeking him out. But you had better believe that him will not be sold in the store. <laughs> I am committed to democracy, not because I'm happy about it. I'm not. What an absurdity for an Orthodox Jew to say. God gave us the truth at Sinai. We have the truth that every four years you are going on whether we should keep it. What an absurdity that is. Of course, Judaism is against democracy in the Western sense, but because I will never start the Civil War, and I've written it time and time again, I will, despite everything else, commit myself to Russian democracy. There will for, for all Jews, not for us. Why do you bring in this red herring of the burning of bus stations? Am I for that? Isn't that absurd? What a red herring this is. No one wants, no one wants to burn bus, bus stations. No one wants to stone Jews. I am as much opposed to Jew stoning Jews as I am opposed to Arab stoning Jews. I would hope that in Israel, the kind of a Jewish state will arise that will bring the Messiah, one in which there is equal rights for reform rabbis to perform marriages and divorces which will produce bastards, will not bring the Messiah.